the Buddha describes suffering and stress, he starts with some things that we're all used to, we're all very familiar with. Aging, illness, death, separation, not getting what you want. That last one is interesting. He says, for people who were born in this world, we don't want aging, we don't want illness, we don't want separation, we don't want death. But these things are not to be gotten by wanting. You can't simply just want them not to happen. They're going to happen once, once you've been born. But there's another place where he says all things are rooted in desire. All phenomena are rooted in desire. The word dhamma there can mean good and bad things. It can even include the path. One thing that's beyond the category of dhamma there is nirvana. So the path is based on desire, and one of our desires for, or one of our motivations for following the path is that we do want to get beyond aging, illness, death, and separation, because we see these things really do cause a lot of suffering. So the desire is there as a motivation, but we realize just simply wanting it, an escape from these things is not going to ha make it happen. But we take that desire and we focus it properly. That's how we give rise to the path, like getting the mind concentrated right now. There has to be the desire to do it. It's not, it's not going to happen on its own. But simply wanting it to happen is not going to happen either. You have to take that desire and focus on the right steps. Try to breathe in a way that's comfortable. Find a spot in the body where it's easiest to stay focused on the breath. And watch over your breath so that it stays comfortable at that spot. And when the sense of comfort seems relatively steady, okay, then you expand it. Think of it seeping through all the nerves and blood vessels in the body as far as you can go, and then see if you can maintain that. What you're doing here is you're taking your desire and you're combining it with skill. Because we do have preferences. We prefer lack of suffering over suffering, lack of harm over harm. So it's inevitable that we're going to have preferences and desires. And to get the path developed requires a certain amount of clinging. You hold on to this. We all know that image of the raft. You use the raft to cross the river. Once you've gotten to the other side of the river, you don't carry the raft with you. You leave it there in case someone else might need it. But while you're crossing the river, you've got to hold on. If you don't, you get swept away. Sometimes I hear people getting all tied up in knots. They think, well, I shouldn't have any preferences or I shouldn't have any clinging in the path. And the whole path is motivated by preferences. And there's an element of clinging, and there's an element of desire. It's part of it all. It's just that we don't sit there simply with the clinging and the desire. We try to figure out what's the best way to put this to use. We don't mix up cause and effect. Trying to practice without desire is like saying, well, I understand that people, when they're, f when they're full, don't eat. So I'll get myself full by not eating. It doesn't work. To get to that state of fullness, you've got to eat. Once you've reached fullness, okay, then you don't have to force yourself not to eat. There's no desire to eat anymore. And that's the same with the path. This practice of concentration is our food to give us energy along the path. So you have to fix your food well. And then the path will take you where you want to go. Because otherwise we live in this world, that's, as the chant says, where we're a slave to craving. Wherever our cravings pull us, there we go. The image they give in Thailand is of a water buffalo that has a ring in its nose, and you tie a rope to the ring, and you can pull the buffalo any way, direction you want. Because its nose hurts so much when you pull, it's got to follow. And it's the same with our craving. It pulls us along. 
And so we have to figure out, okay, which of our cravings and desires are ones that are worth following? Because there will be a certain amount of stress as we follow the path. It's not an easy path all the time. It's not hard all the time. You have to be ready for whatever comes up. When they talk about the great way being not difficult for those with no preferences, what it means is whatever comes up, you're ready for it. You don't complain and say, well, I've got this problem right now. Why am I having this problem in the path? Why am I having this setback? The mind is a complex thing. You may be making progress in one area and falling back in another. And that's normal. There are times when you have to push yourself hard, and there's a lot of resistance someplace in the mind. Well, if you don't face up to that resistance and learn how to work your way through it, you'll never make any progress. There are other times when it's easy. Okay, take advantage of it when it's easy. And one of the skills we're developing along the path is this ability to give yourself the nourishment you need so that when things get hard, you've got the strength to draw on. When they're easy, you stockpile things for the next time it's going to be hard. In other words, you really work on your concentration. Don't get complacent. So that when the time comes and you need that extra energy, it's there. So this kind of clinging, this kind of desire is a really useful part of the path. And remember that even equanimity is something that has to be fabricated. It too is based on desire. It means several things. One, okay, when you meet up with something that's difficult, you remain equanimous. You don't get upset about it. You just do what needs to be done. When there are areas where you can't do anything, okay, learn how to treat those with equanimity too, so you don't waste your energy, the energy that otherwise you could devote to things where you could make a difference. So even equanimity involves clinging, even equanimity involves desire. It's simply a matter of learning how to use these things skillfully. That's how you stay on the path. Because if you get off the path, what do you got? Just more aging, more illness, more death, over and over and over again. More separation, over and over again. And you have to ask yourself, have you had enough? And if you want a way out, as the Buddha says, you can't get it by simply by wishing. But if you take that desire to get out, and then you focus it on a path that actually works, and this is what he's offered to us, a path that works. As he says, the normal reaction to suffering and stress is, on the one hand, bewilderment, and the other is a search for somebody who might know the way out. And so he's offering us the path as a way of ending that bewilderment and giving our search the proper direction to make it a noble search. So you don't just content yourself with makeshift things. You focus on finding a happiness that can really last, that you can really depend on. Now that's not something you make. The path is made up out of things that are fabricated. And fabrication here means that you take what you've got. You're not take, making up things totally out of thin air. You've got some good potentials already. You learn how to maximize those potentials. Look after them so they grow. It's like looking after a tree. You've discovered that in your field you may have some weeds, so you get rid of the weeds, but you've also got some valuable trees growing, trees that can give you wood, trees that can give you fruit. So you look after them. Now you don't try to pull on them to make them grow fast. But you nourish them. Keep the weeds away. Make sure everything is nicely watered. And the trees will grow on their own. That's how the path develops. 
There's some things you do and there's some things that come about as a result of what you've done. And to see which is which requires that you experiment, try various things. You may find yourself pulling on a few trees, well, those trees are going to die. Well, next time you find a good tree, don't pull on it, but learn how to nurture it. And over time you get a sense of what really works and what happens on its own, what you've got to do and what will happen as a result. So you're not just sitting there with the desire or the wish, but you're taking that desire and wish. You're putting it to good use. You're not pretending you don't have it. If we didn't really want to find peace of mind, we wouldn't be here. We'd be off someplace else. But it's just learning how to approach your desires and wishes in a mature way. That's how we get what we truly want. The heart's, the heart's true desire is for a happiness that's reliable, a well-being that's reliable, something you can really depend on, something that's harmless. And as the Buddha said, there is a path. So do your best to follow it with skill, because it really does pay off. <laughs>